The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving, moving everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Yes. The Spirit of God is moving in our lives. The Spirit of God is moving in the world. The Spirit of God is moving everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving, moving every day of our lives. The Spirit of God is moving, moving, moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Let's go. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Moving to do good. Moving every day of our lives. Moving to love our neighbor. Oh. Moving to great man every day. Moving to save man every day. Oh. Moving to do good in our human life. Moving to give a message. You can never stop the Spirit of God from moving. The Spirit of God is moving, moving everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving, moving every day. The Spirit of God is moving. You can never stop the Spirit of God. You cannot hold it for one place. Yes. God is everywhere. Oh. He desires to do good every day. He desires to do good every time. He desires to save the whole world. Oh. He desires to have mercy upon us. He desires to walk for us. Oh. He can never restrict the Spirit of God from moving in our lives. He can never stop you from moving. Oh, he's a merciful father. A father that does good every day. Yes, he will use you every time. He will use whoever he wants. Yes, even a sinner he can use. Even a beggar he can use to work for him. Anyhow you are, he can use you. Oh, he can use those who have not gone to school. Yes, he will use you and make you to be to be a true disciple of him. Yes, that is the spirit of God. He uses anybody that he wants. He can never tell you what to do in your life. Yes, his ways are not our ways. The Spirit of God is moving, moving everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving in all religions. The Spirit of God is moving, salvation is everywhere. The Spirit of God is moving, yes. The Spirit of God is moving. Oh, yes, sir. Nobody can forget God. Nobody can forget the Spirit. Yes. He does whatever He wants to do. He can never obstruct God. His will is upon our will. Let us obey Him every day. 
The Spirit of God is moving, moving our lives, moving to do good, moving to do good, moving to save man, moving to do justice, moving to love our neighbor. Oh, the Spirit of God is moving. Say it loud. The Spirit of God is moving. Yes. The Spirit of God is moving, 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 moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Oh, oh yes, oh. The Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is moving. Yes, so of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, my dear friends. And I wish you all a happy Sunday. Another Sunday in the month of September. Today being the 29th day of the month of September, Holy Mother Church celebrates the 26th Sunday of the year in ordinary time. Year B. And as usual, let us look at our readings for our reflection in this Sunday. The first reading is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, from verse 25 to 29. The psalm is taken from Psalm 19. The precept of the Lord are rights, they gladden the hearts. We will see the second reading taken from the letter of St. James, who has been talking to us for these few Sundays. James chapter 5, from verse 1 to 6. Then the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, from verse 38 to 43. Then 45, 47 to 48. Beautiful readings for our reflections in this Sunday meditation. My dear friends, the readings of today seems to be funny, and if we are not very careful, we we'll begin to misunderstand the thoughts of God and what God does in our lives every day. No wonder He has told us in Isaiah 55 that my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So he does whatever he wants to do, and we must accept it because we are not in his shoes. He is our creator, our father. Let his will be done upon us. And so sometimes he does certain things that we may not understand him with our human little knowledge. Look at today in the first reading. We saw how Moses, the first leader of Israel, who took Israel from the land of Egypt, the land of slavery, the land of bondage, into the desert. And from the desert, preparing them to enter the promised land. But the Israelites kept complaining, distracting Moses, abusing him, insulting God, being faithless to God and even to Moses. And so Moses was tired of these complaints, of these too much demands, murmuring, and all that they were putting upon him, the man was getting tired. And it was as if God has abandoned him. It was as if he has failed because he is not able or capable of leading Israel to the promised land. And so Moses became a prey, one of the victims of discouragement. And he cried to God, Are you still there with me? Can't you see how these people are disturbing me every day? Am I the one who gave birth to them? Am I their father? Am I the one who brought them out of Egypt? Kill me here. Let me go my way. The people are always complaining. In Egypt, we were eating cucumber garlic, 
onions, beautiful vegetables. And here, you Moses and Aaron, you have brought us here, and that you are God to come and die here in the desert. And it was as if Moses was tired. Yes, of course. He was tired and discouraged. And he prayed that God should take away his life or do something very fast. This is the background of today's first reading. And then, God spoke to Moses and people to come out of the camp and meet him at the foot of the mountain. And he summoned his elders. And there, God took away the power and some powers and authority of Moses and the spirit that was in Moses and give it to the elders, the 70 elders. They prophesied. But something happened. Two elders who remained in the camp, Eldad and Medad, started prophesying. And when Joshua, the servant of Moses, saw how Eldad and Medad were prophesying the Spirit, he reported them to Moses, thinking that Moses would ask him to go and stop them. But when he told Moses that Eldad and Medad too are prophesying the camp, should we go and stop them? Moses said, why are you jealous in them? I wish the spirit that has come to these 70 elders would have been for all the people, the children of Israel to be like me and the 70 elders to begin to prophesy so that the workload will be reduced from me. And that was how Moses silenced Joshua, who was a bit jealous in the others because they were not in his camp. They were not in that camp that Moses has formed. And that they were not trained. And so why should they receive the Spirit? He became jealous. Dear friends, this reading also prepared us the ground to understand the gospel message of today. In the gospel pericle from Mark Gospel as we have read it today, we saw a similar thing happening to Jesus and his disciples. Of course, the apostles. The apostles went out and saw a man who cast out demons by using the name of Jesus. And one of those apostles, James and John, remember this James and John, in Luke Gospel chapter 9 from verse 51, they have come to report one of the Samaritan villages to Jesus who were obstructing Jesus' passage to Jerusalem. And they asked Jesus to give them permission to go and destroy them by fire. But Jesus rebuked them. The same James and John reported to Jesus, we saw a man casting out demons using your name. And we, we stop him. But Jesus said, you ought not to stop them. He who is doing a good work using my name cannot be against me. He who is not against me and is doing the good works is for me. He who is not against me and is doing the good works is for me. So leave him. Don't stop him. And so here we see Jesus, we see Moses and Jesus allowing God's spirit to flow. Moses' decision not to stop the elders and murder is the same thing as Jesus telling his apostles not to stop that man who was using his name to cast out a demon because they were doing something good. When the good works is done in the name of God, even outside the established institution established group it is a good work and is in the eyes of God pleasing to God this shows that God can use anything take my word anything any object any animal any human being to perform a good work take for example in the book of numbers chapter 22 from verse 28 there was this king, the king of Moab, Balak, who hired a soothsayer, Balaam, to go and curse Israel. And Balaam went to curse Israel with his donkey. Fortunately for him, an angel of the Lord appeared to him 
and wanted to destroy him. And he told him that we're going to curse the children of Israel. And instead of cursing the children of Israel, God changed his mind and his attitudes and blessed Israel. God here used, uses a soothsayer to bless Israel. And so Israel was blessed by a soothsayer and God tolerated that. What about that? God used a donkey to speak. He brought his message through a donkey to speak. God can use anything to pass out his message because he is God. And so whether you are a priest, whether you are a man of God, whether you are a prophet, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a Catholic, whether you are a Protestant, whether you are a Pentecostal, whether you are a Muslim, whether you are a humanist, whether you are a philanthropist, whether you are a pagan, God can use you to perform a good work. That is the message we have to learn from this today's passage. God uses whoever he wills to perform good acts. What are these good acts we are talking about? Loving our neighbor as ourselves. Promoting justice and peace and joy. Bringing humanitarian services to our brothers and sisters for the well-being of humanity as philanthropists and humanists are always doing in our world today. They may not be Christians. They may not be Catholics. They may not be Pentecostals or Protestants. They may not be Muslims. They may not be African traditional religionists. God goes beyond the boundaries of all religions and denominations. We have to learn all this and also accept the good works that is done in other uh, religion and other places because it is the same God who works. He who is doing his work and is not insulting me and is not used against my name is for us. Leave him as Jesus has told us today. All for the promotion of God's work on earth. It is like we in the Catholic Church when we are told in our theology that outside the Catholic Church there can never be salvation, my dear friends, not at all. Even in our documents, outside the Catholic Church, there can be salvation elements of truth are found in other denominations and religions. Elements of truth could be found in our Protestant and other denominational uh, groups. Element of truth could be found among our Muslim brothers and sisters. Element of truth could be found in our African traditional religion. We should not just condemn all because they do not belong to our party. There must be that kind of collaborative cooperation that will be united together in order to promote God's work on earth. That is what the message of today is telling us, my dear bro brothers and sisters. Look at we. Even we priests, you are sent to an institution or to a parish, will it take every function only for yourselves? The Catholic Church has provided for us many, many, many opportunities and ministries, shared ministries, even among the, the lay faithful. You, you need to be a, a fanatic like Joshua or James and John to carry everything, operation, do it alone. And then you see how it will lead you as as a priest, you want to do everything. Finance, you are there. Um, um, organizations, you have to preside. Lady, you preside. Party pastoral council, you preside. Every work in the office, you preside. Preside over uh, marriage. Uh, marriage uh, marital uh, courses here and there. Catechism class, you are always there presiding. You, today in the Catholic Church, we have what is called extraordinary ministers. The Catholic Church has asked us that in, in some places where the bishop deems it necessary, he can share some of the works, the sacrament, and allow the lay people to participate. We see some lay people handling uh, pre-marriage courses, some lay people taking the aspect of teaching catechism, some lay people distributing Holy Communion. In danger of death, they can baptize. That's why we have catechists, religious instructors, marriage instructors, 
the bishop himself has spread his functions and his, his ministries among the vicars, the deans. They have to take the responsibilities, all for collaborative work. We share this among the religious. You have Roman sisters in your parish. It's a blessing for you. They help in teaching in schools, help, help in the hospitals, they help you in the sacraments, they can teach catechism, they can instruct the pagans, and a lot of work is being distributed in the Catholic Church. So it is not something that we should take, take it alone. It is a, co a collaborative effort we are talking about here that Jesus and Moses are letting us know that we must share the function all for the greater good. All for the greater good. And so we have to allow others to, to participate. The question is, I'm, I'm the only one who is ordained. Who are you? Are you ordained? Are you a Roman father? Are you a this and that? I'm the only one. No, my dear friends. Such functions should be allowed to ordinary man and woman to assist us. And we, we can also cherish beautiful... I, I, I myself as a person, I like listening to good homilies. Good preaching teams that are given to us by some pastors who are not members of the Catholics. Oh, you see, many of them are promoting salvation. They preach repentance. Not only these uh, pro prosperity preachers, prosperity preachers are here to damage the church, and by their fruit you shall know them. And that's what Jesus said: He who is not against us is for is, is for us, and he will not say any bad thing against us. And we see them. Powerful preaching. God is also using some ministers of the church to heal. Some ministers of the church to perform signs and wonders, miracles. We have to cherish that all for the greater good and for the, the glory of God, for the upkeep and the building of the church. Dear friends, that's what is that's the importance of today's message. Look at even in, in the book of Joshua, chapter 5, from verse 13. Joshua experienced the presence of God's angel. And he was thinking God's angel was only coming for the people of Israel. And he said, are you on our side? Or, or on the side of our enemies? He said, I am God's army's commander who have come. Neither on any side. God is not for you. Sometimes we say, I, I, I am a very big God though, that is standing by my side. A very good God, oh, by my side, by my side. He's standing by your side, not only by your side. He's standing on other people's side. He's standing everywhere. He's everywhere. They cannot pocket him, only standing by your side. Who are you that God should stand only on your side? God is everywhere, and he manifests his goodness anywhere he wants to be. Whether in the Catholic Church, the Protestant Church, whether in African traditional religion, when our brothers, our Christian Brother missionaries came from Europe. They condemned everything about Africa, not knowing that the goodness of God is also found in our religion. There are certain things that we need not condemn. God can use you as a sinner and perform a miracle. That is my dear friends. God can use you as a sinner and perform a miracle. He can use a thief, he can use a Jew man and perform a miracle. That is God for you. And that is why our brother Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, from verse 28, he said that there is neither Gentiles, neither Jew, neither slaves, neither female or male. We are all one in Christ. There should be no discrimination. Why are we fighting among ourselves? Why are we quarreling? God wants to save all. Let us shine our eyes when we see goodness that is being performed elsewhere. We have to cherish that. And as St. Paul also tells us, the author of Hebrew 13 from verse 16 says, Keep doing good, good works, and sharing your resources. For these are the kinds of sacrifices that please God. And in just as St. James, in today's second reading, tells us the rich who are so selfish, 
who do not want to share their riches and their wealth with the poor and the common people. They can be in the church. These rich people can be in the church. And we can find rich people who are sharing their resources outside the church, helping the poor, just like the philanthropists that I've mentioned earlier before. In the second part of today's gospel, Jesus said, He who gives a, a cup of water to these little ones, he who does not scandalize these little ones, is promoted in the kingdom of heaven. And so God is telling us to share whatever we have. And we have seen how people are, are doing their kindness, their generosity, hospitality, charity, in sharing. They may not be church members. They can be pagans. They are atheists. Are they not doing what the morals and the ethics of our Christian faith tells us to do? And they think on the last day, he who does not go to church but is doing good, on the last day you will not see him in heaven. That said, there will be many surprises in heaven. Those whom we claim are great churchgoers and they are performing in the church and they are not promoting the welfare and the well-being of our neighbor, you will not see them there in heaven. And those who have not even gone to church, even one day, and they go on and on, loving their neighbors and promoting justice and peace everywhere, don't be surprised to see them in heaven. That is God's will and God's way of life for us, my dear friends. The themes of today are so beautiful. But the first thing of today and the first part of the gospel has really taught us great lessons. We should learn from this. Look at our Lord Jesus in Luke Gospel chapter 7. A man sent messengers to him to come and heal the servant, the centurion, servant. And the Jewish elders begged Jesus and said, This man is not, our, is not with us, but he built us a synagogue. He is not with us, but he contributed and built a synagogue. No wonder Jesus was pleased to go and heal the servant. So God is pleased with the good work, the good work that is being done. This is a message of today. And in the same, the same message we can appeal to all of us that let us be one. Let us be one. The Lord has prayed. He has prayed that we should be one. In John Gospel 17 from verse 21, Father, let them be one as you and I are one. And so let us recognize the good works that are being done in other religions. Even among the orthodox medical personnel, they should also collaborate with the traditional medical healers, orthodox drugs, the herbs that the traditional healers use to heal the sick, to cure ailments. They should collaborate, they should cooperate, not discriminating one another. A traditional healer can use herbs, the roots of trees, to heal, to do good, not just to be condemned and then be washed away as sometimes orthodox um, healers or doctors are always discriminating. The same thing with us even in the church. Let us always welcome good works that are being done, even in not, not in our institutionalized church. Or those of us who have been trained, we should share function. That is what the readings of today are reminding us. The greater good that is being promoted and being done should be promoted and welcomed even among us. There should be no discrimination, no jealousy, no envy, like Joshua in the first reading of today, or John or James, the apostle in the gospel of today. Let us recognize God works in many areas of our lives because the Spirit is moving. Just like I, I mentioned in my chorus today, the Spirit of God is moving and you cannot restrict it. You cannot pocket God. God wants to do the way He wants. Let us allow Him to walk in the world to walk in us and walk in all others. This is the message of today, my dear friends. May Almighty God, who has given us this message, help us 
to welcome one another. Whether you are a Catholic, whether you are a Protestant, whether you are a Pentecostal, a Muslim, the traditional African religionists, let us come together and work together to promote God's work on earth. Ecumenism among us Christians is the word. Dialogue among us. Dialogue amongst Christians will help us to understand one another, to understand our background, to appreciate the good works that have been done. But above all, we always pray for God's Spirit to come upon us to help us to, to discern and have the spirit of discernment to know what is good and what is bad. To discern the evil forces that can hide in the church to perform a good work and then continue to be bad. God is himself who can expose where the bad people are hiding to do queer things in the world and in the church. Let us give God a chance to do his work among us. Thank you for listening and may Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Sunday and God bless you all.